Good morning everyone, my name is Al and welcome to my channel, Kim Souls of Brooklyn. And today folks, I want to talk about one of the real legendary stores that existed in the New York area, particularly in Brooklyn. They existed in Manhattan too. Of course, I'm talking about Alexander's, a wonderful store that I used to love to shop in. So tune in for a little retrospective on the wonderful store called Alexander's that we all love to shop at. So Alexander's was started way back in 1898 by a guy named George Farkas. And the way the name Alexander's came about was that Alexander was the name of George's father. So he naturally took that as the name of the department store that he started building. Now, what was so amazing about George, uh, about George Farkas was that, unlike a lot of places at the time, uh, George turned around. He actually had 16 stores at its peak. And the difference of George between like uh, Corvettes and uh, obviously a lot of the flea markets that opened up, which ended up to um, the uh, store actually closing in 1992, there were 16 stores at its peak. But what made um, George different was that unlike going in and leasing the property, George went in and actually bought all of the places where Alexander's existed. Now, uh, one of the places, of course, was King's Plaza, which is where I used to shop uh, with my mom and dad. And he also had a couple of big places over in Manhattan, which was like prime real estate. So he was able to buy these things at a low price at the time. Uh, not that Manhattan was ever cheap, but it was far more, it went up in value far more later on in time. Uh, so much so that when he sold King's, when, when his son actually sold the King's Plaza property, because they actually owned King's Plaza with Macy's, when they sold their half of it in 2012, they actually got $751 million uh, for that property. So what turned around and what happened was, unlike a lot of places that went out of business because uh, they, they, didn't, they weren't viable anymore, uh, George's company, Alexander's, even though the stuff wasn't selling the way it used to sell, they actually still had the real estate. So it actually became a big real estate conglomerate. So like I said, just in that property alone, in King's Plaza, they were able to pull off a $751 million sale. But what I really liked about Alexander's was, of course, I'm gonna focus on the, uh, the Brooklyn property, was that the um, King's Plaza Mall opened up in 1970, and me being born in 1965, right away we turned around and we started shopping there. And I always found Alexander's really cool as a kid because naturally they had a big toy section, and my birthday is December 24th, so obviously, um, me being the youngest child, I was a little spoiled. So uh, when Christmas time came around, my mom always made sure that I got double presents. You know, either I got double presents or I got one big present. And between uh, Alexander's and you know some of the stores that are in my neighborhood, I did pretty well at Christmas time usually. So I used to love the toy store at uh, Alexander's. Um, when I started Catholic school, they also sold some of the, you know, they sold the blue pants. In Catholic school, we had the blue pants and the white shirt. Um, they just had, you know, it was kind of like an early, an early free runner to like, you know, to Walmart in a sense, because you went in there and they had the pots and pans. They did a nice Christmas uh, set up at Christmas time. But the most fair, oh, the most favorite thing that I remember, most favorite, is that a word? I don't know. It's early. I did a great shift. But the favorite thing that I remember is the toy section, specifically the Planet of the Apes section that they had. Let me tell you a little bit about that. So probably my favorite franchise growing up, even probably more than Batman, which is surprising because people know I'm a huge Batman fan, was the Planet of the Apes franchise. And they came about right about at the time when I was born. Of course, the first movie came out in 68. And um, then you had uh, four more movies after that. Then you had the TV show. But what was so amazing about the Planet of the Apes thing for me and the Alexander's correlation was a lot of people don't realize that Planet of the Apes was really the first movie that did a major tie-in with the release of a TV series or of a movie. So Planet of the Apes had a lot of toys out. So by the time like 1974 rolled around, there was a ton of toys out there. So, and they were pretty much exclusive. So. Alexander's had a good deal on these toys and they had a major display there. So one day my mom says to me, hey, you know, well, we, we need to go to King's Plaza. We need to go to Alexander's. And I was like, yeah, okay. You know, I didn't, I didn't mind going to the mall. My mom and I were very close. So, you know, going to the mall for us meant that uh, we got to get in the car and 
I uh, turned the radio on. So I, you know, loved the music of the 70s. So um, we got to King's Plaza and we parked in the, in the, in the mall. It was free parking back in that, that day. How about that, right? So we went to Alexander's and um, I'm thinking, okay, here we are, we're gonna go and we're gonna go find something pretty boring. But when I went in there, I got the shock of my life. You know, it's funny, when I think back to being a kid, two of the biggest shocks of my life had to do with Planet of the Apes. The first one was when I saw the movie for the first time in 1968 and Charlton Heston sees the Statue of Liberty. I'll, I'll throw a picture of this uh, up there. When Charlton Heston sees, the, sees the, the Statue of Liberty on the beach, I was just flabbergasted as a kid. I, I just was shocked. So that was the first one. The second one was we walked into Alexander's and you know my mom gave me probably the best surprise of my life. When I went in there, here was a guy dressed up in full makeup of the Planet of the Apes. I mean, it was perfect. I remember the guy, um, and there was about 20 people online. So I think I still have some of these. They were giving out these these magazine type of photos. And what would happen is the guy would sign it to your name. And so I still have a couple of them home somewhere. But I was flabbergasted because I had never seen anything. I had never seen makeup like that in my entire life. And they were promoting the TV series, which was coming out, um, in, I think, in a couple of months with Roddy McDowell, who actually played the role of Galen, which was he played in the earlier movies as well. But it was a different role called Galen, but he played that. But I remember shaking the guy's hand and the hair on the guy's hand. I mean, this was 1974. I mean, now when you watch things like The Walking Dead, this would be like, you know, child's play. But back in 1964 and to see it up close, it was perfect. I remember shaking the guy's hand and seeing the hair on his hand. I was just knocked out. So of course, you know, I met this, you know, I met the guy and the guy actually talked as well. And um, it was just incredible. So after, after that, we walked around Alexander's and we went to the toy department, which we were actually sitting in the toy department. My mom, remember we got this um, Planet of the Apes play set, which had like one of the, um, the ladders coming down and it had, um, it had a couple of characters in it. It was just amazing. So for me, I had a lot of wonderful memories of Alexander's. So when Alexander's um, started losing money back in the early 90s, I mean, they started losing money really in the 80s because that's when all the flea markets started coming around. And um, But officially, all of the stores in Alexander's went out in 1992. And in fact, King's Plaza stayed vacant for a really, really long time. I think it wasn't until about 1995 or 1997 that Sears actually went in there. But like I was saying, Sears was actually renting that property. And it wasn't until 2012 that actually that family actually sold or it, the company sold that property. So it was really a lot of fun. I mean, it was a, it was different era back then. And uh, of course, you never wanted to see some of these stores close because you would go there during uh, when school started and you typically see your friends there doing the same thing. And everybody was a little sad that, you know, the, uh, the school year was starting, you know, but... Uh, it was really a nice store. Like I said, it had a little bit of everything. And I'm going to put up some pictures here to show you what that looked like if you don't remember. Um, I even remember my friend in the early 90s actually joined the Alexander security team. They did their own security as well. They didn't really hire outside. So it was kind of a really good setup. I mean, it was kind of designed somewhat in the way that Macy's was set up. But uh, like I said, it didn't last. It went out in the early 90s and 92. And of course, it was another store that was... Um, destined to go the way of the dodo, as they would say, um, that just couldn't stay viable retail-wise. So a lot of good memories of Alexander's. Folks, I'd be interested. Um, if you guys want to subscribe, that'd be fantastic. Uh, if you want to drop me a line, I'd be really interested to hear some of your memories of Alexander's, some uh, memories that you remember. And obviously, and you know, I, I think they had a really good record store as well. So if somebody remembers the record store, um, I'm more remembering the ones that um, Sam Goody, I think I was more of a Sam Goody guy because I used to like when they used to put all the, um, they would put the 45s in the row of where they were on the charts. So I think so that was also at King's Plaza. But if you guys have any good memories of Alexander's, I'd love you to share them with me. Um, if you could subscribe to the channel, that'd be amazing. Uh, we're actually starting a suicide prevention foundation. We should be getting the number in a couple of weeks, the official 5013C. It's a foundation for my son. Unfortunately, we lost my son. He was a brilliant musician, and we lost him uh, a year ago. We lost him in August of 2019. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to start a foundation. We're going to be giving out musical instruments to kids in need, to kids who want to play who can't afford them. We're going to be setting them up with lessons. So if anybody out there um, knows a celebrity who'd want to help us out by doing like a little endorsement, uh, or if you have a musical instrument that you would like to donate, please drop me a line at the at um, Waffles Foundation at gmail.com. I'd really appreciate it, folks. And the channel has just been monetized as of the end of July. So whatever money I make on this channel will be going toward the foundation of suicide prevention. So folks, hug your loved ones. It's very important. If something's going on, please encourage them to reach out for help. Thankfully, uh, by 2022, once you dial 988 on any phone in America, the FCC just passed this law uh, on July 16th of this year that as of 2022, 988 is going to be the new 911. So if uh, 911 is still going to be there, but if someone has um, suicidal thoughts, all they got to do is dial 988 and that'll hook them up with the National Suicide Prevention Found, uh, Crisis Center. And um, we're also going to be doing a website, folks, that's going to be called, of course, the Waffles Foundation. So stay tuned. You could like the foundation on Facebook at the Waffles Foundation. And I really appreciate it, folks. If you guys could help in any which way, it'd be awesome. Like I said, musical instruments, lessons, um, any kind of donation that you think would be would be would help the cause. Because every 40 seconds, someone passes away in this country of suicide. And we want to help try to stamp that out. So, folks, until the next video, this is Al signing off from sunny Florida after doing a grave shift. Um, palm trees in the back. I wish everybody well. Good luck with everything. Um, the virus. Hope everybody's staying strong out there. And I'll see you next time. Take care now, folks. Bye-bye.